The Fourier transform is a mathematical tool for representing an arbitrary function with a superposition of sine waves. You might already be familiar with Fourier transforms. If you're not, there are links to some excellent resources in the notes on this video. Since Fourier transforms represent arbitrary signals as a superposition of sine waves, a convenient representation is to plot amplitude versus frequency, often called an amplitude spectrum. Imagine having a set of sine waves of different frequencies on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, turning up amplitude on just some of the frequencies that you'll use for representing the original signal. Amplitude spectrums are commonly used in audio systems for visualizing which frequencies are dominant in a signal. The kick drum drives large amplitudes for low frequency sine waves, and the hi-hat drives large amplitudes for higher frequency sine waves. We can do the same thing with images. For example, if the original image is simply horizontal black and white bars, then that can be approximated by a single vertical sine wave at a particular spatial frequency. We would get two dots on the resulting power spectrum image, or Fourier transformed image. Lower frequencies are closer to the center of the Fourier plane at the origin. Higher frequencies are further from the origin. Why are there two dots instead of just one? Because power spectra have mirror symmetry. For audio signals, we don't typically plot both sides, but for Fourier transforms of images, we typically plot the whole thing. Lenses perform Fourier transforms. That is, in an imaging system, when an image is relayed from one focal plane to another focal plane, the result is not an image, but a Fourier transform of the image. Once that Fourier transformed image is relayed a second time, it provides the image back again. Take the case of a microscope. At the sample plane, light is shaped into an image by the object. At the back focal plane of the objective, the pattern of contrast is actually the Fourier transform of the image plane. A second lens, the tube lens, is needed to Fourier transform back into the original image. After the tube lens, one can go directly to a camera, an area detector. No further lenses are required. But if you want to look at it with your eye, then you'll be peering through another lens, your eye's lens. To make sure you see the image and not a Fourier transform of the image, you'll need a second lens, and that is the eyepiece of the microscope. Here I built a simple system to show you the basic principles of Fourier optics. Here uh, we have an LED light on the left uh, to illuminate the sample, and we have a camera on the right to show the uh, image of the sample point and so that we can see on the screen. Um, this is where the sample is and this is the sample holder. To the left of the sample, this is set up as the illumination part to illuminate the sample uh, homogeneously. And to the right of the sample, this is uh, built as uh, uh, imaging parts. Um, this is the objective, which is a simple uh, convex lens, and this is adjustable uh, adjustable slits, uh, which is positioned at the back aperture of the uh, objective lens, and this is where also where the uh, Fourier plane is. And we are going to use this uh, uh, adjustable slit to manipulate light at the Fourier plane uh, later in the video. Then we have a beam splitter here to uh, split the lights onto two cameras. The light passing through the beam splitter will go through another tube lens and um, form an image which relays the image of the sample point onto the camera uh, so that we can see the image of the sample, um, of the sample on the screen here. The light we reflected off from the uh, dichroic mirror will go through another lens and uh, focus on the uh, uh, camera, um, which projects the big focal point of the objective um, onto the second camera so that we can see the imaging formed at the Fourier point on the screen here. Therefore, we are able to see the imaging plane and the Fourier plane at the same time. So first, I put a slide with a grid pattern on it at the sample plane here. And 
we can see alternating uh, dark and a uh, pattern of dark and bright um, uh, parts, both in the horizontal direction and in the vertical direction. At the Fourier point, we can see there are um, there's a line of uh, a horizontal line of bright spots and the vertical line of bright spots. Uh, these are the Fourier transform deflected from the grids on the left. Um, the spots close to your center represent to lower uh, diffraction orders, and those parts further away from center represents uh, the diffraction, uh, the higher order, diffra higher diffraction orders. Next, I'm going to manipulate the light at the Fourier point and see how it's going to affect the image formed on the camera of the central point. I'm going to filter filter the image at the Fourier point of space or spatial frequency, uh, spatial frequency space. Let me close the slits to block the horizontal spots and only allow the vertical um, spots to pass through. If we look at the sample plan, the vertical line vanishes. In other words, there is no intensity change along the horizontal direction. Why does this happen? Because we just block the line carrying the information of the higher spatial frequencies in the horizontal direction so that we prevent that light from forming the diffraction pattern horizontally on the camera of the imaging plane. If I gradually open the uh, slates, and allow the high frequency components to make to the camera, we can see the vertical lines gradually appear again. Therefore, if we rotate the slip of the block uh, to block the uh, horizontal line, uh, the vertical spots at the Fourier plane, we should expect to see the horizontal line to vanish. Now, after I rotate sleep and close up the sleep, uh, we indeed see the result as expected. Finally, I would like to show you a high pass filter image by blocking the uh, center part of the uh, at the Fourier transform. So, at the center point, we can see uh, we are imaging a polygon pattern, and then uh, you can see its Fourier transform at the Fourier plane. And I'm gonna use the thin wire to just block the center part at the focal uh, at Fourier plane. At the sample plane, we can see that the low frequency contrast is lost, but the edges are still sharp. It's very common in the field of signal processing that the high pass filter gives rise to the result of edge detection. Here, I just show you that we also can do it with Fourier optics. So through the simple demo, you've seen how optical systems perform Fourier transforms on focal planes flip-flopping between image and Fourier planes as you step through each relay of a focal plane in an optical system. The demo setup Che Hong built lets you see both the image plane and the Fourier plane at the same time. In a computer, Fourier transforms are somewhat complex to compute. We have good algorithms for quickly computing Fourier transforms with computers, but it does take some computing power and time. Note that the optical system performs Fourier transforms at the speed of light. That's a fanciful way to say it, but it's true. Optical systems can perform other types of computations as well, and in recent years they have been recruited for fast and power-efficient deep learning algorithms. If you'd like to know more about that, there are a couple of links to get you started in the notes on this video. Che Hong's demo also used an adjustable slit to filter the image in spatial frequency space. 
by blocking portions of the light in the Fourier plane. When we blocked just the outer portions of the Fourier plane, that effectively low-pass filtered the image. Note that since all lenses have finite widths, all lenses low-pass filter images to some extent. This is a fundamental characteristic of optical systems. In some cases, large diameter lenses are used to combat this exact limitation of optical systems. We hope this demo has given you an appreciation for how optical systems perform Fourier transforms. If you'd like to recreate this demo yourself, we have notes on the video below.